Now if you followed the first two episodes of my Warno Bootcamp tutorial series, you are ready for something more advanced that'll take you many games to fully master, which is hotkeys and map knowledge. It was quite a long, dense one with a lot of information packed into it, so I do recommend you all to grab something to drink, like coffee. Now speaking of coffee, these patrons and YouTube members are helping me keep up my supply of coffee, and I just want to give a big shout out to the latest patrons, Stray Thief and MQ9American. Thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it. I receive a lot of comments how I managed to queue up my orders, how I basically never touched the order button on the bottom right of my screen, and how I managed to micro so fast. Well, the answer is by knowing a handful of hotkeys that will make you a better player in general. Another thing you all question is how I know where to go on the map and what to avoid, and the answer to that is map knowledge. Before every game, I quickly have a look at the map and decide where the middle of the map is and what the fastest route to this line of contact would be, and what kind of terrain or available structures there are. If there's a lot of buildings, it's probably good to only put infantry there with some moderate armored support. If it's a wide open field, it might be better to just have recon, ATGM vehicles and tanks there. So you created your battle group and you want to take it into a match. Start off by playing against nobody. Literally, play against nobody. Create a skirmish battle, jump into the game on your own. This is purely to get yourself acquainted with all the things that might seem natural to me but foreign to you which is map knowledge and hotkeys and etc etc. So we started a skirmish match, what now? If you're new to the game or if you're not really that familiar with all the maps, the first thing to do is to read the map and determining where the middle of the map is, because if both teams were to fast move towards each other, that is where the first contact would be. Now we have blue spawn over there, we have red spawn over there, and this here, this road, perfectly splits the map in half. Now you can just do that by positioning the map in such a way that literally the middle of your screen is the middle of the map, like this. Now the second thing you want to do is determining where to go. Let's say you are also playing as the third armored, you're playing on a map like this. Knowing where to go with which units is also super super important. For example over here, we have a lot of buildings, so it's probably really good against infantry with some light armored support, so maybe a one Abrams tank uh, would also be a useful thing to have here. But it will be mainly fought with infantry. Now in the middle here it's a wide open field, so here perhaps having some ATGM infantry or ATGM vehicles or recon like the Bradley would be a better thing to have. Now over on the right side it is still open but not that open, so you don't just have kilometers upon kilometers of open field. Here having a mixture of infantry and armored units would be a good idea. For example, you can put an ATGM here that can shoot all across this map and or maybe a recon unit that can actually spot everything and you will have tanks in the back here to support your infantry with. So that is probably one of the things you can make happen there. So it's a really good map to kind of train yourself with urban combat, with wide open fields, so ranged combat and something of a mixture, so combined arms. Now let me guide you through the steps that I take to determine what to spawn where and basically how I go through the entire process. I just start with one side of the map. So over here, I'm thinking, okay, I want to just put a couple units here to defend the area. So that is one thing that you also need to decide on, is where to defend and where to attack. So here, I just want to have a couple units to defend. So let's go with a fire team that is nice and cheap, We've got 50 points there, and maybe a man pad to also defend against helicopters. The second thing I would do is give these guys orders. So we can select both of them. Don't, don't you dare even look at the bottom right of the screen. You are not going to use any of these. All right, we're gonna go over here, press tab, okay, the tab key on your keyboard above caps lock, and now we have the stinger team selected. We're gonna press the Y key, and we're gonna press down here with left mouse button. What this is going to do is, if we press left shift, is it will show you a green line here. Basically, this unit is ordered to fast move, so take the fastest route possible, move here, and then unload. Now, if you press tab again, we have the second unit selected, the fire team. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna press Y, which is the unload at position key, and press right here. Now both of these units, as soon as the battle launches, will fast move, so take the fastest route they can, move here and unload at the position I ordered them. So after that, you can move these units around. They will still have these orders, so you don't have to worry about that. So we can put them on the left side here to kind of clear up uh, some of the space here. Now that is all I have on the left side, so that should be fine. Next is the units I want to put into the meat grinder here. There's a lot of buildings here, usually it's fought for quite heavily with a lot of infantry. Now what I would do is decide which units I want to select and put there. But do keep in mind on your points that you have. You, want, you don't want to just put 90% of your points in one sector and leave the rest to burn. 
So we have these engineers, for example, they have satchel charges for close range, really, really good. Basically one, just one shot knocks out units. So let's put down three of them. And the way to do this is by holding down left shift and pressing down three times. So the left shift button is not only to visualize the orders that were given to this unit, it is also to queue up your orders or to put down multiple units at the same time. So let's do that again. I selected these fire team units. I hold left shift. I press down once. I can press down as many as I can until I run out of units. Now let's despawn these by clicking right mouse button. Select the engineers once again. Again, don't you dare touch these buttons on the bottom right. We're going to go over here, press tab to select the first one and click Y to unload here. We're going to press tab on the second one and click Y to unload here. With the third one, we're going to do something different. The third one, we're going to hold down left shift. Okay, we're holding down left shift. We're pressing Y to unload here. But while still holding down left shift, we're going to press right click over there. Now, what is that going to do? Basically, this M113A3 that carries the engineer unit is going to unload here. And then the transport, not the infantry, but the transport is going to move to the right side and take cover in these tree lines here and be another unit that you can use to either spot or suppress anything in this open area. So that is step number two there. Now, once again, if we select everything and we press left shift, we can see the orders that they were given. As soon as the battle starts, the game will calculate the fastest route and you will actually see the line on the road uh, which they will take. Now, another important thing to know with the tab key is that when you select different types of units, so we have stinger teams, we have engineers, and we have a fire team, if you press tab, it'll go through them by type not per individual. So if I press tab once, it'll go on the stinger. There's only one stinger team, so only one is selected. If I press tab again, it'll select all of these engineers. If I press tab again, it'll go to the fire teams. So do keep that in mind. So the second thing we're going to do is get two chaparrales out. Again, holding down left shift and putting them down on the map. We're going to select both of them. Once again, don't you dare look there. We're going to press tab to select the first one. And we're going to give him a different type of order this time. I want the chaparral to move as fast as it can to this area here and then attack move, meaning move forward. But if you spot and are in range of an enemy aircraft, I want you to stop and engage this enemy aircraft. So we're going to hold down left shift, press F for fast move. After that, I'm going to press Q, which is attack move or also hunt in this case, I believe you can hover over these buttons. That is fine. And I'm going to press Q on this guy. Basically he's going to move as fast as possible to this route. And then he's going to move over there. But if he is in range of an enemy aircraft, he's going to stop and engage it. There is another button, which is quick hunt here N for November. Basically what this means is if we select our second chaparral and we press N over here, it means that this unit will move as fast as possible to that area, but any time during its travel, if it's in range of an enemy aircraft, it's going to stop to engage. So that is also a uh, useful tool to do if you don't want to make it overcomplicated like this. Now that is that might be a, actually a better way for you to do this, what I've done here. But in some cases, I want my units to just move as fast as possible to the front line and then do whatever they want to do. But in this case, it kind of takes that uh, little bit of extra micro away from your hands. Now, if you select the other units on the left, we can see that we have units going to the left. We have units going here. So that is all good for now. Now, one thing that we lack is recon right now. And the interesting thing about recon is that it can spawn outside of your base, which is this area here in an area called forward deployment. So we can put down this OH-58 helicopter recon, give it an order to move over here. Now with this guy, we don't really need to worry too much about line of sight because it will be up in the air and it basically has a really good line of sight wherever it is. But this changes in close quarters or when you're, when you're flat on the ground. One really nice tool that they added for you to kind of determine the line of sight is the line of sight tool. If we press C or C for Charlie, it'll give you the line of sight from any position on the map, including buildings. So if you hover over here on the plateau, everything that is clear as day is visible. Everything that is gray is not visible. And you will also see some areas that are light blue. And that only happens when you have a unit selected. In this case, the OH-58C. So everything that is clear will be visible and enemies in that area will be detected. Everything that is gray, you don't have a line of sight on. Anything that is blue cannot be detected by this unit. But if another unit detects an enemy in that blue zone, the stinger team can then engage it. So it's kind of like an intermediate zone where your unit can't actually see it, 
but if another unit detects an enemy in that blue zone, this initial unit can then engage it. Now that is really important as well. So recon, we'll go put another recon in the uh, on the map here. Obviously, one of the most essential things about your battle group, they keep a tab on the enemy. So we're going to have this guy move to this building. And once again, if we hover over this building, we can see that it basically enables my recon to keep tabs on anything that might cross over this wide open field. And then you can determine what to do with enemies that might be in this area. You can also combine it because you can put multiple units in the same building with an anti-tank unit. So we can have a tow unit move to the same building here as well and garrison it together with our recon. It is not the best strategy to put the recon in the same building where you are going to fire outside of because usually you will get RT to rain down on ATGMs and it might take out your recon with you. But it is something that you can do in this game. Now another thing is tanks. So on the right side we have kind of a combined arms area and we have 600 points left. So we can do something interesting here as well. Since it isn't really a CQC or close quarters area here, there's lots of space between buildings. I don't think we need engineers because these are only 150 meters uh, range on those satchels. And if we just look at the range between this building and that building is already 500 meters. The scaling in the game like isn't perfect, but it's just a way to balance out stuff. So the satchel definitely isn't going to be useful. We do have some fire teams with 600 meters, 675 meters range on the AT weapons here. So we can put down two of those. Once again, by holding down left shift, we'll press tab to select the first one to go to this building. And we'll press tab again to have the second one go to this forest here to cover our right side flank. Now, one thing we can do as well is get some ATGM units. So we'll get down one of those and put this guy down probably back here because it does have a really nice range more than two kilometers so two and a half kilometers and if we press c that basically means that it will be able to fire all the way over to that tree line there so we go ahead and make this guy unload right at that position you always want an additional recon for the right side don't just have one recon unit so we're going to send this helicopter to the right and if you click above uh, tree lines like this they will hover above it they won't uh, you know compared to if you were to click here they might reduce their altitude and uh, they might not see as much but also be in cover but if you press on top of uh, forests um, you know stay at a high altitude there Next, we want a tank for the right side. We're going to get one M1A1 Abrams. We're going to select this guy and we're going to tell it to fast move to an area that has nice cover, but from where it can then peek out and engage the enemy. So which is this area here. Now with that, we only have 85 points left. So at this point, what I usually do is I select everything and determine where A, I have units not going to, which is this area, and B, I determine what I don't have yet. So I have two chaparrals moving left I have a man pad unit moving left, but I don't have any AA moving right side. So I want to go into my AA tab and with the points that we have, I will decide to go for a PVAD, which is like a Gatling gun on the ground against airplanes. So we can select this guy and make him move to this little tree line here. And when you hover over tree lines, the color of your cursor will change. And this basically means if a unit is at this exact position, it will be in cover. If it is grayed out like this, it means that it's not in cover and it's not receiving any cover buffs from being in cover. Now in a thick forest like this, your units will actually have a little bit more like suppression resistance, etc. Um, if they're fighting against infant compared to units that are out in the open. And it just makes it more difficult to be spotted by enemy recon. So we're going to tell this guy to move up here. Now an interesting thing about this game is that there is radar AA. If we look at the PVAT and we press I for information, we can tell that it has a radar guided weapon, which is designated by this radar dish here. There are seed planes, so planes that can detect radar guided anti-air and they can fire a fire and forget missile, meaning a missile that targets AA with a radar and the plane doesn't need to keep a line of sight on it. It can just detect it, fire it and just bug off and the missile will do its own thing and hit the target. The one way that I control this is by grouping up all AA that I have that has radar. So I select the PVATs in this case, I hold down left control and press one to group it up. So if I select something else, let's say I'm just micro and all my other units, I can quickly press one and then turn on the guns, uh, which also turns on the radar. The easiest way to micro AA is to keep all of your radar AA turned off to begin with. So I do that by pressing the button H, which is the turn off weapons. See that? I just press H to turn off the weapons. You can also do that by clicking on this, but it's a, again, it's a lot more work just pressing H. And once you do see an airplane that isn't a seed plane, just press H. 
Your gun will be on, it can target it, and when the plane is either destroyed or it's already evac'd, press H again to turn it off. So this guy is also ordered, we have 30 points left, and what I usually then do is get some supply trucks, because supply trucks are essential. Now that would basically be our initial kind of army to push with. So as you can see, we're mainly pushing over here in the infantry zones, we have units going to the flanks, we have AA to cover them, we have a recon plane going, or helicopter going there, we have ATGM and Recon going here to cover that. This area is a little bit on the weak side, but the ATGM there should kind of keep a nice cover, and uh, the Recon will keep tabs on the enemy if they do decide to move up here. Here we have a PVAD AA piece, we have an M1A1 going there, we have some infantry going to these buildings, and on, on the right side for us here to keep cover, and we have a Recon on the right side. So this is a nice balanced beginning um, of a match. We're also going to the middle zone of contact. You don't want to just give that up that easily because then the enemy will just keep gaining more and more conquest points and it'll be a hard time to come back from this. Now there is another hotkey that I frequently use and sometimes it's like a ton of work if there's a lot of transports. And that is the hotkey L to sell transports. For instance, these fire teams are in the Humvees. They don't have any weapons. So let's say we unload them right here. There we go. They drive up. They unload the vehicles, and now I just have a bunch of empty transports chilling here, not really being of any use. What you can do is you can refund these vehicles and get the 20 points per Humvee back. So how you do that is by selecting the Humvees, or double click on them and pressing L. Now you don't actually have to do this manually, there is an option here in the game. Right here in the game, play settings, the rules of engagement auto resale, if you just press yes on this, what will happen is any unit that doesn't have any or any transport that doesn't have any weapons on it after unloading the units in this transport it'll automatically sell itself so here we go we just unload right there and now it's going to go back to base after bumping into this car it's going to go back to base and give you those 20 points back so that is also really good quality of life improvement if you do it that way. Now another question I get on a frequent basis is how I queue up my mortars to fire at multiple positions and then move positions as well because I do that pretty quickly but it is a very essential technique to learn if you want to be the best at this game that you can be. So selecting our mortars we've already grouped these guys up by pressing left control and 2 or any number so we press 2 now we have all of our mortars selected. So let's say I want to create a smoke screen that covers this road over here. Once again I would press tab to select the first unit in this. Now, if you want to queue orders in this game, all you have to do is just hold down left shift on your keyboard. To smoke with units, you can look at the bottom right from time to time. The hotkey is B for Bravo. So while holding down left shift, I will press B to give this guy a smoke order to go right here. If I do that again, press B again and shift it up a little bit, it'll give another order. If I do that again, it'll give another order, and if I do that again, it'll give a fourth smoke order like this. Now you can let go of your keyboard. It is not a problem. We're gonna press tab again. Now we're gonna press tab, hold down left shift. Now the cool thing about this is, since the entire group is still selected, it'll show the order of the first mortar here. So while we have the second one selected, we can give it an order to smoke here, still hold left shift, smoke again, still hold left shift, smoke again, and with the last one we complete the orders for the second mortar. Now we're gonna press tab again and hold left shift. See where we're going with this? It is a really beautiful way of doing this. So we're gonna give the third one a smoke order again, 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 and again, just for so that it doesn't feel left out. Now with that you can once again just leave the entire keyboard alone, okay? If the game were to start, or if you were already started, the first guy will already start firing, and the beautiful thing about this is, if we just hover over it, plus left shift, you can see that they will follow these orders up. Now if you want these guys to move, you can do that. Select them again, and as soon as they're done with those, just press right button here. So what these guys will do is they will complete all of their orders, and then they will move position to not get counter artied by the enemy artillery. A second widely used hotkey is the smoke key for tanks. I use that a lot of times, like crazy amounts of times, and I actually troll the enemy by doing this as well, because it's just a ton of fun. If you see a missile coming towards your tank, or actually an anti-tank plane move towards your tank, you can quickly smoke off your tank and break the line of sight between the enemy unit or missile and your tank. Press on your, or select your tanks and press B for Bravo, and it'll quickly smoke it. And this is the same hotkey that we use with the mortars to smoke. So mortars is B as well, and with tanks is B as well. Now, do remember that you only have one smoke round 
or one smoke salvo per tank. After that, you will have to get a supply truck here to resupply this guy. If we want to retreat with the tank, so move away from an enemy while showing our front armor, the most uh, strongest point of the tank, you can press G for grenade and press somewhere where this uh, tank will now reverse towards. Another very important hotkey that you should definitely use, especially when using recon or when you want to do something stealth, is the return fire key. Now obviously, if you have a recon behind enemy lines, let's say this Bradley over here, but you don't want him to expose his location, you can turn off the weapons manually or by pressing H to turn off all weapons, or you can put him on return fire mode, which is the hot for which the hotkey is Z or Z. Now with this, what will happen is this unit will hold fire unless fired upon and when it is fired upon, it will return fire. So that is really it for now when it comes to some of the most important hotkeys. I don't want to like overload you with all of that, but just remember the fast move, the unload at position, the hunt, the turn off weapons with H, the return fire with Z and most importantly, the shift key to queue up orders such as in the case with mortars and this actually takes a lot of pressure off of you as well imagine if you had to give these orders individually you would just be busy doing this for like five minutes while your front line collapses so definitely do please use these hotkeys and try to just learn a little bit do like a skirmish or two every day and just go through the hotkeys and uh, try not to use this uh, tab in the bottom right ever ever again just don't do it